Hi there, I'm Adam Kirbas and this is my novel, The Supermarket Murder. I'm standing in the motel room. It is a cheap, rundown motel. It just doesn't make sense. I am pondering it over. Someone who came all the way from the States paid eight hundred to one and a half thousand dollars for a flight ticket to live here to check in to a Randa rundown motel to go to a place in the Black Sea region in Turkey, which is not even the most sought after tourist destination. This all does not make any sense at all. I assume a cover up. These people in the supermarket, as well as here around, They probably killed them, killed this tourist out of greed. This is what pops up in my mind at first. They saw somehow that this man was wealthy off. That's why his watch, his wallet, he had probably money in it, were missing. This is the reason why they brought in the Leheb family, which is some sort of a royalty in this town and throughout Turkey, in order to wash their hands clean of any sins. So it looks to be a simple murder out of greed for money. But one thing does not add up. Why go through such a length to cover it up? Why didn't they get rid of the passport in the first place? It is still here in the motel room. It lies there. Assumably, the victim had his passport on him. It was stolen but then later brought back. Why didn't they just get rid of him at all? Hmm, this is all pretty much dubious. And they could have gotten rid of everyone. There are a lot of tourists in Turkey actually Actually, there are enough people to deceive. And if you deceive someone, the best way to do is without him noticing it. You take away a little bit, chop, chop off a little bit without him noticing. This is what many crooks here in Turkey actually do. When foreigners come, tourists mainly, they add up a little bit to the prices. They invent some prices. This is one or two bucks, f five at most. Tourists and foreigners do not notice it. Well, since many of the tourists and foreigners pay in their own currency, they exchange them for the local currency. They gain a little bit. So everyone is better off. No one really notices it. A little bit of tip you can assume. 
but going so far to kill a foreigner and then an American citizen. This is always bad. And I wonder if they would have killed this victim if they would have known that he is an American citizen. Because no matter what you do, you do not mess around with Americans. This is stupid. Because you know that sooner or later that this world would become political. Americans are known for even saving the lives of one of them. So maybe They didn't know it. Maybe. And maybe because they didn't know it, they went through a great length to cover it up. But again, or some sort of distract everyone. Mislead everyone. But why didn't they get rid of the passport in the first place? Because the victim was shot in the head. No one would have been able to recognize him. In his face. Hmm, this is a big issue. And why did they bring in this motel? Couldn't they just drop him off? I look out of the motel room window. On the, st on the street, on the pavement, oppo opposite of the motel stands a man. He looks up at, m at the floor where I'm standing and he seems to be weeping. This is very unusual. People pass him, no one seems to notice him, but he just stands there and weeps. And then I see a police car approaching. Murat, my friend from old days, from the old days, gets out. This is for me probably the sign to leave. I again, my gaze again roams over the motel room. This one bag. There is, everything seems to be empty. Maybe, maybe he used the motel room to bring in girls. This indeed happens. Some foreign tourists, they go abroad to indulge in a, a lot of debaucheries through my work as a private de detective in the US. I do a lot of work where I try to prove that the spouse of, of my contractors is, is unfaithful. There I know that a lot of men actually travel or mo move to a different town like Las Vegas, like Atlanta, Florida, in order to have, have sex with many women and they mostly book motel rooms, motel rooms in rundown or rundown motels. Why? Because some stupid people assume that Because of this, they would get cheap sex so that they could bargain with the bargain with the prostitute. I mean, some people are just stingy. However, maybe, but even if he had used this motel room, where are his real belongings? Where is he living? And If he used this motor room to have 
sex with prosty dudes. Someone must have seen something. Because, well, these things draw, draw attention. Especially here in the north. Or maybe not. And you have further indication because is you get further indication the motor room seems to be recently cleaned. I still smell the floor soap. Hmm. Maybe one of those prostitutes had enough of him. And came together with some other criminals and they then decided to get rid of him. Maybe he was aggressive. Maybe he was violent. Who knows? But why did they kill him in a supermarket? This just does not make sense. They could have gotten rid of him somewhere in a dark corner and this city Ordu has a lot of dark corners where you can drop people d dead and it would take days until this dead body would be discovered. Why kill someone publicly in a supermarket? This is it appears to be stupid in a way especially when it turned out that the victim was an American citizen hmm. I'm not quite sure about this I closed the door of the motor room and walk downstairs to the reception area. Again, I see the reception girl. She's staring at me and she has, she has now turned on the personal computer. She looks at me and she ostentatiously types something in a Word document, trying to prove to me in her way, in a weird and strange way, awkward way, that she probably knows how, how to use a personal computer. But I immediately get aware that she does not know how to type with all ten fingers. She only uses her two index fingers and this is very unusual for someone who works in a reception because you get a lot of requests as a secretary you have to write some reports you have to write some some uh, explanations you have to write uh, uh, respond to offers, to requests, and so on and so forth. And if you only use your two index fingers to type a message, this takes way too long. And many secretaries, or most of them, know how to type with all ten fingers. So I'm again sure that this woman is not a secretary at all, that this woman is not working here in the motel, but yet someone is watching us from the background. Someone who heard us, I assume the entire motel is bugged or at least the reception area. And this per 
person immediately rushed in and switched off, switched on the personal computer. The person who knew the password which this pretentious woman did not know. She looks at me. I want to engage her a little a bit because I know more and more I g gradually understand that she is maybe not very sufficient. Huh? She probably has not really thought this one through. I assume this is probably a gang, a group who planned this murder. They haven't thought this through too many cooks spoil the soup because the more people in, in indulging criminal activity, the more you have to take care or the more you have to arrange and ally narrations. Your story ha has to add up. So the more criminals are involved, the, the more likely it is you will find someone whose story does not add up. So I'm, I want to engage her. I, I've seen the room, I'm telling her, and I'm not leaving her out of my sight. I want to I wanna see every reaction of her. I've seen the room, I'm calm, and I see that she's nervously fidgeting with her hands. This all seems she's uncomfortable. I know I got her. Something was, is weird. Something weird is going on. She knows it. She tries to Calm down. She inhales deeply. She holds her breath. She tries to calm down her voice. The only response I get is yes. A hesitant yes. Then she tells me we always clean the rooms of our customers. Every day I ask her, yes, she responds. Hmm. It is splendid, clean, I threw in. She smiles. She's self Assured, yes, we have very good cleaning personnel. She seems to be flattered, like I have made her a compliment. She probably cleaned the room upstairs. I look at the sideboard and I see that a lot of keys are dangling from this sideboard, sideboard, keys to room doors, which I, and I assume that the motel must be empty because it is winter. And here in north of Turkey, around the Black Sea region, well, there is not much snow, only in some areas so there is not much tourism going on and the Turkish people mostly they are not really in, in indulged in skiing this is rather something you see in Europe in middle Europe and I ask her is the motel fully booked she does not look at the sideboard and says yes. This was a 
suggestive question. I want to know. I want to know whether she's smart, whether she observes her surrounding. I want to know whether she has is actually working here at all, either as a receptionist or as a cleaning woman. And someone who have been working there would have known that the sideboard with the visible keys would be a clear indication whether the motel is booked or not. She told me that the motel is fully booked without even glancing at the sideboard. So someone who would have been working there would have, before making this statement, looked at the sideboard, even though it is a cleaning woman. Despite being a cleaning woman, she would have passed the reception area because the reception area I look around hasn't been cleaned or are not, isn't been cleaned very properly, yet every cleaning woman who would clean the reception area would immediately notice the keys in the sideboard and would have either hit it or said the motel is not fully booked. And she continued Continues. She further exacerbates her situation. She t tells me, "Well, the motel is every is fully booked in this time of the year." I look at her penetratingly but I didn't hear any guests in your mo in this motel she becomes uncomfortable again well they probably are sleeping she's not very smart it is in the afternoon a proper answer would have been well they went out Because it is, it is well known that tourists, especially when they are from Western Europe, that they are used to uh, early working day. They mostly get up at six or seven and they roam the st streets. There you, this is how you can immediately note and recognize a foreigner tourist. They are on the streets at seven or eight o'clock and they go to bed very early. But you would not see a, a tourist sleeping in the afternoon. You would not see that. Especially they, they came here to see the city and not just sleep all day long. Maybe somewhere in southern Turkey in summer when they have been partying a lot and, and have to sleep off their drunkenness, then maybe, but not here. I seized them, seized in, in Terry. I look around and I see Murat and Terry. We look at each other. I've been waiting for you, he tells me. Yeah, yeah. Something new came up. Okay. I'm still trying to pro says the information I am 
getting in. We walk out, I get into Murat's police car and we drive off. You know, he has been, he has a house here close by. Murat tells me I'm embarrassed. I look at him, he is uncomfortable. He doesn't want to look at me, doesn't want to look in to my eyes. Why did he have a motel room then? I ask him. Well, you know, he is one of those tourists and he didn't bring home or he couldn't bring home girls. Was he married? I inquire. Murat is uncomfortable, not that I know of. I remember the hand of the, the hands of the victims. If he had a wedding ring, it most certainly would have been stolen. I remember his seared arm wrist, his sunburned seared arm wrist where probably a watch was and which after he has been killed, after he was killed, was probably removed. But I did no sunburned or skin or I didn't see anything on his both hands that would have indicated that the victim was married. After a while, Murat froze in out of nowhere. He probably had a girl friend in the States. Probably. I matter. This thing all gets weird. Even though if he had a girlfriend, why didn't she accompany him? Because the, this thing that he went here, that Mr. Jenkins went all the way here to the to uh, Turkey just on on a vacation in winter doesn't make sense. He probably had some business to do. Something was going up, going on here. He had probably a clear purpose for coming to Turkey. But what? And are those people who killed him in this supermarket are they in a way involved in this at all or, or are they just brutal robbers thieves who just kill people publicly and doesn't even seem to care what implications a public murder has that if you kill foreign nationals publicly that this comes always with a lot of media coverage this is something you should have known especially when it comes to American citizens I assume that right now, at this very moment, many, many news channels in the US report about a shot dead American citizen in a Turkish supermarket. And I assume that on social media, 
rumor, rumor sp- spread that this victim, Mr. Jenkins, was probably a good, faithful Christian, was probably a missionary, and he was only shot dead because he was Christian. And this would then in return indicate how backward Turkey really is. They shot a poor man who didn't want anything to do but to spread the gospel of Jesus, the message of love, whatever you have, whatever you want to call it. And then he, this poor man, this poor soul was shot dead. I assume that by now the American media has, has portrayed Mr. Jenkins as a saint, as a good person. And you can't say anything against it. I don't know him. I've never seen him. I have pocketed the passport. I look at the passport. No, I have not seen this face before. I don't know anything. I ask Murat, do you know whether he was a missionary? Murat's answer comes quick. He was not a missionary. Are you sure? Yes. We know missionaries around here. Are there any missionaries around here? I want to know. No. Only a few and they are mostly Greek who want to who want to unearth their roots before the expulsion after the First World War. I see. So he was not a missionary. I trust Murat's answer because his answer came quick and his fear and our fear that this would be a missionary, this has probably grasped everyone. This is something no one wants. A dead missionary, this is for sure as hell, would lead to a, to an, to a international political upheaval. We drive past the supermarket. I see the, I see now the forensic team is inside the supermarket and I see a black coffin being hauled into the back of the ambulance. Hmm. We drive to Mr. Jenkins' house. It is an old house. And it is a house which seems to be have built in the 70s or in the 80s when the Turkish economy actually wasn't very strong, when it was very cheap for a foreign national like someone in Europe or in the US buy buy, uh, the ground as well as build a, a home. The home you can see from the outside, from the facade is not very well in isolated. It is run down the outer side of the house was not painted in years. 
Mm. And it has been built in an old style, old style that was very common in the 70s and in the 80s. So probably this house was built by Mr. Jenkins's parents or relatives. The house doesn't look elaborate. It is a simple apartment house which you find everywhere in the city. And this means the, this means that uh, probably when Mr. Jenkins's relatives or his parents bought the house that this was not or the ground the place was most certainly not in the center of the city or was not close to the center of the city. The city here in Ordu is very fast growing and it is most likely that this house was back then built in an outskirt of the city there, therefore it was cheap therefore it was built built in a simple way but throughout the years 40 to 40 to 50 years later the house has moved more and more into the center because the city has expanded and now the city center seems to be very broad and I assume that Mr. Jenkins probably came to Turkey to deal with his family affairs like I did. I traveled from all the way from America to Ordu to get rid of my parents' home. I came here to sell it and probably Mr. Jenkins did that too. It would make sense why someone pays 800 to one and a half thousand dollars for a ticket via aircraft. We go in to the home. It is a free story storage free story house the house was built assumably for one purpose and this is for retirement this is what you see a lot with my grands who are working abroad they built three or four story homes which uh, with independent apartments, apartments they can rent off and they mostly live on, on the upper floor and while renting out the lower floors. So this is very typical for migrants who support the Turkish economy who sent money from abroad to Turkey to build these homes and in a way have contributed to to a building boom in the in the eighties and nineties. These were the migrants who were brought as workers to Europe, especially Austria. Austria, Germany, France and these migrants always uh, were had in mind that they would one day return to Turkey and they wanted to make necess necessary arrangements in the, for that case and this meant that they would build homes homes where, where they could rent them out, where they could later go into re 
retirement without having any issues to deal with and so on. And this led to a boom, to an economic boom in this area. But this boom uh, subsided because the children of the migrants, they did not want to live, to live in Turkey. They had parents actually had only made arrangements for themselves, not for their children and their children. They rather considered themselves as themselves as Europeans and they were not in the least interested like their parents to build homes in Turkey. They rather wanted to stay in Austria. Korea, Germany or France, despite the fact that some of these states tried to give these migrants incentives to return to their home countries, but they rejected it. Why? Because many of these sons or many of these children of these my they actually did not know much about their own culture. They did not know, know, know the language properly. And for them, it was just no option to go and live in Turkey. They, there was a barrier, a social and cultural barrier. And this is when the boom sub Sided. And this is why you see a lot of homes here in Ordu not being finished because some of those people had speculated on, on, uh, on uh, the children of migrants wanting to build in Ordu homes as well. This did not work out well and... The, the, then more and more gradually people from inner Anatolia moved into these coastal areas because Anatolia because of the heat waves of the constant heat waves because of global warming and the already scarce resources became inhabited Table. That's why many people from Anatolia move into the big cities. And this led to, a, to the different boom of in the construction industry here in Ordu. But this home was built in the 70s and in the 80s. I look around in this old home. It is. It appears to be that someone has been living here all along. There are there are satellites. There is a satellite dish outside. This is not very common for foreigners who scarcely speak the language. They do not watch Turkish. TV, they rather watch TV on via mobile phone, phone or you to a foreigner cannot make use of Turkish television. So the satellite dish is probably of someone who has been living here for a while. This house was inhabited, but yet it is run down. So the person did not take care of it.